Hi Dojo Disciple, Sean Orange here. I'm actually getting ready to film some uh, regular Famicom Dojo episodes, but uh, I have this MSX2 just sort of laying around right now, and I figured I'd uh, dive into it, do a little bit of an unboxing video, and show you what uh, this system's all about. Um, off in the corner here we have a uh, controller and a game, which we'll get to that stuff later, so let's just move that out of the way. Um, yeah, let's break into this thing. So, uh, really quick background. MSX was a, a standard developed by uh, Microsoft and I believe Panasonic. Um, yep, right there. And uh, some, some, other, some other companies in Japan. Uh, pretty popular before the Famicom came out, so you'll see a lot of games uh, that uh, were released later on the NES and Famicom. Uh, so this was uh, this was a, a, a later version of uh, the hardware. So uh, yeah, let's just jump right into it. Yeah. You can probably just open it this way too, right? That's probably easier. Yeah, we'll slide this out of the way. Okay, so we got some things up here first. Can't really see that, so flip it over. Alright, so we got ourselves uh, the control pad, um, which is really small and dinky, uh, but uh, let's see what year was this released. It's probably a reason they even included the joypad, honestly, uh, and as you'll see in a minute. But um, this connector here uh, is standard with uh, the SG-1000, um, and then later the Master System and uh, Genesis. And some AV cables. Our lovely power brick. Ooh, that, is a, that was a good one there. What do we got? So it's, uh, yep, 100 volt rated, so you possibly want to use a step down converter if you're going to use this in an American outlet. Very proprietary plug there. Um, yep, good times. Nice huge power brick. Okay, let's uh, see what we got here. This is the bottom. Flip that around. Okay. There we are. Okay, well, where's the console? This is the keyboard, right? <laughs> well, this is the console right there. There's the uh, flap for where you put your game cartridges. Um, in the back here, we have our mono uh, audio outs and then the uh, video out right there as well. Um, and then we have a couple of these ports here, and in uh, some consoles, these are actually AV outs. Uh, yeah, this is this is an RGB out, so um, this this well, is probably a duplicate of this. Uh, possibly, I don't want to say stereo. I really can't be sure of that. Uh, but we got some expansion ports here. I don't think anything that I have will use this stuff. So you know, it was meant to be. It's it's kind of a home computer, like like a lot of these consoles were before the Famicom came out. I uh, got our power plug and then the RF stuff. So it's it's a uh, pretty well stocked. This is the second edition of the hardware. It's possible that like the AV stuff wasn't originally part of it. Um, okay, here's the power button on the side here. Looks like. And then uh, batteries. Ooh, There's no chance. Look at how rusted that is. There's no chance that uh, those batteries work. I don't think so. There might be some onboard memory possibly. I don't know. Let's find out. Uh, here, let me get a little closer on the keyboard here. Oh, yeah. So, it's more or less like a standard US QWERTY keyboard. Um, you can see uh, the hiragana next to it. So, next to Q, there's ta, uh, te, e, su, ka, n, na, ni, da, se, and on and on. There's no real correlation with uh, with the U.S. characters at all, so I'm not really quite familiar at all with um, how Japanese keyboards type. Usually, they use some kind of romaji uh, version. So if I want to like type in something like ta, uh, which is this key over here, I just be like T A, and then it would uh, whatever um, like Windows application I was using would would, would figure it out. Uh, we got some controls here, so. The thing you gotta remember too is that you know the the, the control pad isn't standard, um, so you controlled the game with the keyboard here. So uh, it's kind of funny we keep talking about how consoles and PCs should really sort of converge, but we sort of forget that uh, they were originally a lot closer than they ended up being thanks to things like the Famicom. This is the Kana button, so I bet the switches between um, the QWERTY English keyboard and then the 
the hiragana that you see over here. All right, so let's talk about some games. Uh, I only have one right now, uh, which is uh, King's Knight, which was done by Squaresoft. Um, one of their earlier ones, I believe, might have been before, uh, might have been before Final Fantasy. Here, I have an NES version here as well, which I picked up a little while back because uh, I was like, "Oh, that's pretty cool." Uh, it's, it's kind of a fun game. I'm really curious to see how what the differences are between uh, the MSX and the NES versions. Um, anywho, uh, this other gamepad I have, which looks very much like a Famicom controller, uh, this is the Hudson Joy Card Super X, um, which looks very, very much like uh, the uh, the B controller that they released for the Famicom, except, you know, it's gray. Um, but otherwise, this is very much a Famicom-style thing. I bought this thinking it was a Famicom controller, not really looking too closely at the plug, which, again, is that standard between uh, MSX and SG-1000 and everything. This definitely does not go into the Famicom because there aren't enough pins, unfortunately. But it does have turbo, which is pretty standard for what uh, Hudson likes to do with controllers and everything. And this one was released... Oh, it doesn't say, unfortunately. But uh, let's see if we can find the controller port, shall we? There we go. So I got ports one and two, and I just happen to have two controllers. So that's pretty nice. So plug in. Let's, let's do the joy card in port one. Now on an SG-1000, uh, or rather the Mark II and three. these are one and two. Interesting, right? All right, so put in this game and then hook it up to a TV and see what we can see, eh? Alright, well my kit was a little bit short, hence why I'm propping up this bad boy against the rest of my video games hooked up to the, my TV here. As you can see, there's a PS2, Wii, Wii U, and Xbox 360, and that's pretty much my current setup. Ah, just kidding, the PS2 and the Xbox 360 aren't even hooked up right now. Uh, anyway, so, alright, uh, let's uh, point this bad boy at the, can at the television here. I wonder if it can't... Alright, so it appears that the problem with the cartridge is just that it is dirty, so I'm going to uh, give that a little bit of a cleaning here. Oh yeah, that is uh, filthy. So let's just uh, give that a good scrubbing and then uh, we'll give it another go, shall we? I mean, it's kind of cool, right, that uh, the fact that it even boots up to um, some kind of built-in uh, OS thing. It is a computer after all, so that's not really terribly surprising. It's just that, you know, if your only experience is with something like the Famicom, uh, then you might think that the only reason that you don't see anything when you don't have a cartridge in is because the, the system just can't do anything, and that's just not true. Uh, like the Master System, for instance, which is a contemporary with the NES and Famicom, um, have built-in games, uh, in, in some of them at least, but uh, like, like the, the Master System um, Sega logo was built into the console itself and didn't actually pop up with the game. So it's just a decision Nintendo made and um, you know there's some variations like the Famicom disk system had a uh, boot up screen um, you know because it loaded discs so it had to uh, but it wasn't really into the GameCube and disc based media that that became a standard thing on Nintendo consoles. Although the Game Boy you know it's the same thing right like you load up a Game Boy and it'll give you the Game Boy screen and then nothing if there's no cartridge inserted. So, very clearly, you know, it was just a decision Nintendo made. Uh, had nothing to do with their ability to do that or not. All right. That's pretty amazing. There we go. That's what I like to see. So this is also an MSX game, like an original MSX game. Uh, and then kind of like, uh, as you would find with, um, like, an SG-1000, the graphics aren't as good. All right, all right. So I got to use the keyboard to select which device to do, and I have joystick one and two entered right now. Um, so I'm gonna use joystick one. Hit number two. There we go. Oh, oh dear God. Oh God. <laughs> God. Ah. Oh, the scroll on this is just awful. Did I fall in? 
No. So this game is moving me forward. I can't... Yeah, looks like... Did I get shot or did I just fall off the end of the screen? Oh. Okay, so now I'm this wizard guy. Oh, I couldn't tell until just now. He's, he's actually shooting little uh, lightning bolts. Sorry about the sort of ghetto uh, not using the capture device, but I can't really talk and do that at the same time. Well, I guess I could, but it would take more effort than I want to put into it. Wizard Car Carva? Now I'm a lizard. Wizard and a lizard. So if I hit that, I go over it. Oh, am I slowing down if I do that? Oh, interesting. So I shouldn't touch these because it's, this is my speed. Alright. I, I haven't really played this game before, if you can't tell. Alright, so there's stairs. So what I could do is I could go here, get my speed reduce of 1, and then go back into it. Go down. Oh, look at that. Ooh. Alright, I'm going to speed up, and then... Oh, can't shoot those. Oh my god, I cannot handle this. The music's decent enough, but it's the... Oh, god. I got shot. I got... Damn. Okay. My fourth and last guy, it looks like. You know, I'm just going to bomb out of here. Because, why not? And now I'm dead. Are you curious to try out the NES version now? I know I am. Alright, so this was just supposed to be some simple uh, unboxing video, but now that we've kind of gone down the rabbit hole, I really can't help myself. So uh, we're going to put in the uh, NES version here of uh, King's Knight just for comparison's sake. And, uh, oh, hold on a second. <sighs> yeah, I'm going to go there. <laughs> uh, input. A couple of these things to go through here. Uh huh. HDMI. Yup. This is literally my TV remote now. <laughs> Apologies, everyone. Okay. The title screen is different already. Oh, the sound is way better. Okay. Oh my god. Look at that. Look at that. Oh. This is incredible. This game I can play. I'm sorry for my mix between elitist. It's so smooth and I can see. Alright, so my hit points are at the top. I don't have all the explanation on the side like I did with the other version. Of, uh... There we go. So I don't appear to have individual stats anymore. Does so the slowing down hurt my hit points? It does, okay. So, the original version on MSX was a bit more robust, a bit more RPG like. But this just appears to be a straight up, you know, action game. Well, I could probably keep doing this forever, but let's, uh, let's bomb out. I kind of missed the intro screen in the MSX version that shows all the different, uh, people you play as. God, I should really try and play and or review this game and find out what happens when you go farther. Whoop! Dead! Wow. Uh, wizards don't have a lot of hit points, so I guess I'm not that surprised. Alright. Yeah, we're back to this dude. The, is the level design layout the same? Let's find out if I can get to that same uh, staircase. Looks like I can. Alright, let's uh, do this. Ooh. Oh man, this is way, way better. Actually, see the fire moving across the screen. All right. So, in conclusion, uh, that's the MSX. <laughs> um, pretty cool. We don't want really to talk a whole lot about the different kinds of games uh, and the different consoles that came out uh, concurrently or before the Famicom did. So, it's something we really should touch on at some point because uh, I can jump. All right, that's it. <laughs> I'm out of here. Babacom Dojo.